Dracula is a timeless tale that's been told countless times. Get it? Countless times? Because it's Count Dracula? When you stop and think about the original story, it's kind of boring. A rich guy wants to buy a house in London, so he hires a lawyer to handle his real estate affairs so that he can find the perfect home. Of course, he's a blood-sucking vampire, but if you take that part out, it's a pretty mundane tale. Renfield attempts to tackle the story of the lawyer Dracula hired, albeit in a less horror and more comedic manner. God bless you, Mr. Renfield. Oh, God bless you, nuns. In the original 1931 movie, Renfield travels to Transylvania to Count Dracula's castle to help him with leasing the Carfax Abbey, a castle in London. He refuses to stay with the local village and instead spends the night with the Count, which proves to be disastrous for our hero because Dracula bites him, not turning him into a vampire, but instead bonding the two, forcing Renfield to serve as Dracula's familiar for all eternity. Now Renfield is nuts. There's no way around that. He prefers to eat flies and spiders. Once in London, he's thrown into a mental institution, and that's kind of where he stays for most of the movie. Until the end, when Dracula sees that his servant betrayed him, and he kills Renfield. But that doesn't really seem to be what happened in the end, according to the 2023 movie Renfield. Because, from what we've seen in the trailers, he's alive and kicking, still serving the Lord of Death. <laughs> Going off the trailers alone, so no spoilers for the actual movie just yet, it seems to take place in modern day New Orleans, which is funny because that's where Dracula 2000 took place. It looks like the focus is on Renfield not wanting to serve his master any longer, but still enjoying the power that Dracula's given him. Renfield is played by Nicholas Hout, and Dracula is, of course, played by Nicholas Cage, which was a lifetime dream for him to play the Count. Did you know that Cage's uncle is Francis Ford Coppola, the very same person who made the 1992 Dracula? There was even talk of Cage playing Jonathan Harker in that movie, but thankfully that didn't happen. How would they write that into the canon? Well, the main hero in this Dracula movie is now the main villain in another. Anyway, back to Renfield. Watching the various trailers, it looks like Renfield is fed up with his master and ready to take him out. So he teams up with a cop, Rebecca, to end his reign. It's all done silly and over the top, and I couldn't be any more excited to see this movie. But first, real quick, I just have to mention how in one of the trailers, it looks like they partially remade the original 1931 movie, which is just awesome. Look at this. I really hope we see more of this in the movie. But enough talk. Let's get to the theater and watch Renfield. Well, I'll just start off by saying Renfield did not disappoint. The music, the sets, even the clothes everyone was wearing was exactly what I was hoping for. And Nicolas Cage was phenomenal as Dracula. He was really truly made for this role, and he embraces all of the Count's quirks. It opens up just like I had hoped, retelling the original tale in the style of the 1931 movie. It's kind of weird, but Cage does look like Bela Lugosi, and Nicholas Holt kind of looks like Dwight Fry in these scenes. They do offer a brief history and go over how the two men met, and it's a good refresher. However, they conveniently left out the part where Dracula threw Renfield down the steps to his death, but okay, fine. We learn that Dracula has a cycle that he kind of does. He'll indulge on too many humans, he'll get the attention of some vampire hunters, and then he's attacked and ultimately weakened. Then the two have to skip town and move to a new location and lay low for a little while. And then the cycle repeats itself. That's what leads us to modern day New Orleans. And once again, Dracula is in his weakened state. They're also out of funds, so they have to resort to living in an old abandoned hospital but it kind of fits the eerie scenery. It's not a castle, 
but it's still pretty creepy. To find victims for his master, Renfield goes to a support group for people with low self-esteem. A leader of this group is Mark, played by Brandon Scott Jones, who also plays Isaac in the show Ghosts, which is admittingly a pretty fun show if you're looking for a family-friendly sitcom. Isaac died of dysentery. That smells like a fart when the living walk through you. Oh, hey! Nice try, that was you. Anyway, Renfield listens to these people's stories, which are usually someone in their life abuses them, so Renfield finds that person and makes them pay by feeding them to Dracula. Pretty brutal, but that's how he justifies the killing. These are bad people who are doing bad things. But there's a catch. Dracula prefers the blood of the innocent, even requesting nuns and a busload of cheerleaders. I want a handful of nuns, a busload of cheerleaders. With Renfield going after all the city's degenerates, it's inevitable that he's going to run into some crime bosses. And that's where we meet Teddy Lobo, played by Jean Ralphio himself, Ben Schwartz. His family owns these streets and the cops. Speaking of the cops, the only non-corrupt cop in the whole movie is Rebecca. Her dad died on the force, by the hands of the Lobo family. So her goal is to take them down by any means necessary. Renfield and Rebecca first meet at a bar that gets attacked by Lobo and his men. In this movie, when Renfield eats a bug or spider or fly or anything like that, he gets superpowers and is virtually unstoppable. So after taking out all the bad guys, Rebecca and Renfield get to talking and a love interest is set up. But at the same time, they didn't forget that Renfield had a wife and daughter. But that was 90 years ago, so I mean, he's ready to start dating again. During one of his groups, Renfield realizes that Dracula gets his power from the bodies Renfield feeds him. Without him, Dracula is powerless. He won't grow to full power. Exactly. He won't grow to full power. What? That's so weird. Why would you phrase it like that? But yes, he's right. So Renfield simply stops. He gets an apartment, changes his style, and moves on, which really doesn't last that long. Renfield comes home that evening to find the Prince of Darkness at his dining room table. They actually follow the rules on this one too, where a vampire has to be invited into your house because Renfield has a doormat that says, welcome, come on in. Knowing that his servant betrayed him, Dracula promises to make Renfield's life a living hell, and he'll be begging for death. But Dracula won't give it to him. The first place he goes is to Renfield's support group. There's a cool part here where after Dracula makes his big grand entrance, he pushes Renfield away. And before he can even hit the ground, Dracula already killed everyone in the room, showing just a little bit of his power. And after that, the Lobo family find Dracula living in the hospital and they team up with him. Renfield and Rebecca team up as well. They fight the bad guys until Rebecca learns that the Lobos have her sister Kate held hostage. And that's not good. So the team has to go save her. Of course, they stop to get supplies first, like wooden stakes and crucifixes and stuff like that. Then they prepare for a fight of their lives. And what a fight it is. When the two walk into the crime family's house, it looks like Drac has already turned just about everyone into his servants. And now they all have the same power Renfield has, but not the same experience. So after a bit of a fight, Renfield wins. All that's left now is to save Rebecca's sister and kill the undead vampire. But it looks like they might be too late because Kate is already dead. Dracula offers to bring her back to life with some of his blood, and in return, Rebecca must pledge her life to him. But she's not dumb and refuses. 
the two attack the monster, with Renfield even pulling out his teeth. But not even that can stop Dracula. They end up casting a holy spell that traps Dracula and he can't move. So the two take that opportunity to beat, dismember, and cut him up into tiny bits. Then they encase those bits in concrete made with holy water and dump him in the sewer. You might not be able to kill him, but you can sure make it hard for him to come back. They use Dracula's blood to bring back Kate and all the support group people, and it's a happy ending. And that was Renfield. Obviously, I'm still running high after just watching this movie. After seeing just about any film, when you leave the theater, you think, man, that was really good. But here, I actually think this will stand the test of time. And six months from now, I want to rewatch it. The jokes are great, and I genuinely laughed out loud several times. But it's not too goofy or too cheesy. The effects are fantastic. Dracula turns into bats several times throughout the movie, and the effects look awesome. They stay loyal to the original story, for the most part, and you even get to hear Renfield's famous laugh once or twice in there too. Cajun Holt's chemistry is also really good, which isn't much of a surprise because this isn't actually the first movie that they've been in together. That would be The Weatherman. If you're a fan of Dracula or Nicolas Cage, then watch this movie. And I kind of recommend that you either see it in theaters or you have a really good surround sound system because there is some good use of where you hear Dracula's voice all around you. It's pretty creepy. Obviously, I recommend Renfield. Check it out. I give it three and a half yummy juicy bugs out of four. Ooh, never punched a head off before.